Good. So we have one last topic here to do just a close of everything, a short topic on this course. And I left it uh, after, um, until after we had done the, um, the, the, the boot plots in the other course, because it would be, it's a little bit easier. In fact, not, not a little bit, it's, it's very much easier to understand now. So what we had done is that we remember one of the things that we had done in our introduction to feedback, like um, feedback amplifier some weeks ago, was to show that when you take an amplifier, right, just let me block this out a little bit. If you take an amplifier, you have the, the normal amplifier that has some transfer function, AS. It all works all well and good, but if you were to take um, a portion of the, the output and apply negative feedback to the amplifier, we saw that there, there were a number of benefits to the amplifiers. Remember, of course, that the amplifiers, there were four categories of amplifiers that we went through and discussed. And depending on the, the, the categories, things, all of the, the main um, characteristics of the amplifiers improved. So for instance, for voltage input amplifiers, we increase the input impedance, which is good because that reduces loading. For current input amplifiers, we decrease the input impedance, which is good because it means more current goes into the amplifier and less remains in the source. And the same thing for the output impedance in, in, in both of them. We, we spent a little time on the discussion here for that, but it, it really involves some discussion on Thevenin's and we were more interested in the results. So you're not going to be asked anything about deriving that, but it is, if I were to ask you some of the advantages of feedback um, for, for amplifiers, you would, you would be able to comment on, on the, both the input and the output impedance as well. We also saw that it stabilized the gain of the amplifier. So the amplifier, we know that when things get warm, um, the component values, uh, tend to drift around, or when they're carrying currents or voltages, they tend to, the, the, the component values in them tend to drift around a bit. And because of that, your carefully calculated gain may vary. And what we, what happens is that by ap applying the um, feedback for, to, to the amplifier, we tend to stabilize the gain. What it does, it, it marginally reduces the gain of the amplifier, but it improves its overall um, performance in that it, it tends to, to make it independent of the device itself, which is good. So they, 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 by providing the feedback, the gain of the amplifier, of the feedback amplifier is almost entirely dependent on beta. And, and, and the amplifier is free to, for its own gain to fluctuate within reason. And, um, and, 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 still, and you still have the, the sort of behavior that you want. So we looked at these four. And today, what we're going to do is to see how applying feedback improves the frequency response of the amplifier. All right. So um, let me just jump to that slide here. I just stuck in a extra slide so that we can start back here. Good. All right. So again, the sort of model that we were looking at was that the amplifier, there's a type of amplifier on, on Little revision here. There were four types of amplifiers. You remember, voltage in, voltage out, voltage in, current out, current in, voltage out, and current in and current out. Right. So this amplifier, that block could be any of these four, and the types of feedback that we had depended on first what was the input and what was the output. So the feedback depended on on what was being sensed. So if the output being sensed was voltage, then the feedback applied was series. All right. And then um, if they, 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 they um, sorry, if my, my mistake, you, you either sensed voltage or current at the output. If you were feeding back voltage, right? If you were feeding back either um, voltage then the feedback was series. If you were feeding back current, then the feedback was shunt. So you could have a voltage series feedback. You could have voltage shunt feedback. You could have current series feedback, and you could have current shunt feedback. 
all right? Those were the four categories and we went through what the sort of equivalent circuit would look like. And you spend some time doing that and, and, and you'll, you'll have some, some practice questions on that. Um, and and it, it came up already in, 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 um, in, in last exam as well. So this time we're going to look at specifically just to close it off now, what happens when you apply feedback to an amplifier in terms of its bandwidth? So <clears throat> if the amplifier has a gain and the gain we could describe by this transfer function, some k omega zero over s plus omega zero. If I give you this and I tell you, okay, what is the frequency response from what we've just done in on board plots? We know that the first thing that we do is to replace s with j omega here, which gives us this. And then we express that transfer function now, which is a frequency transfer function in a standard form by dividing through now by omega zero to make the coefficient here one. So the overall A of J omega is one, is K over one plus J omega over omega zero, right? And we could plot this out. We know this is a single pole transfer function. The first thing that we did, right? So this sort of response, the corner frequency is omega zero Everything less than omega zero, the line here will really be 12 because we have a k here. This is going to be 20 log k. If this is one, then this would have been a zero dB line, right? So maybe I should draw it a little bit better than that, just not to confuse the matters here. Hold on. All right, let's go back here. So, we have our frequency axis here. So close to DC and when omega is much less than, than, than omega zero, the response here is 20 log K. And then for omega much greater than omega zero, we know that this is, well, I'm drawing it very badly here. Hold on. Okay, let it turn back. So this will go right up to here. And then for omega much greater than omega zero now, we have this, and this is decaying at minus 20 dB per decade. Right, you remember that from, from what we did last week and we concluded it today. So now without, we, we, we know how to do this so we can sketch this without even um, um, having the plot values of omega. So the board plot for this would look like this. Right, and this is the magnitude of A, J omega here. Right, make sense? Let me know if anything doesn't make sense or if you're not following, All right? So what we're going to do now is to apply feedback to this amplifier. This is a straight amplifier. So all I have here is just this. A S and this is the, the, the frequency response of that amplifier by itself. So the next step now is to apply some feedback here to this and see what happens. If we apply feedback, we know that the transfer function now is negative feedback so it's going to be A over one plus A beta, right? Which is what I have here, right? Beta is some, some um, value, some, some feedback network that we have here. We don't know what it is. So we just leave it as, uh, as beta in here. So A of J omega, of course, if I substitute with feedback, substitute S with J omega, I in how I have, a, this is A J omega from here, right? Remember A J omega is this, over one plus beta times A J omega. Yeah? Make sense? All right, so this is A J omega. So let's expand that a little bit. 
just open out the bracket. So I know if I open out, expand the bracket and thing, I now have k over one plus beta k plus j omega over omega naught. Yeah. I'm going to put this now. Let's put this in, in, in the sort of standard form that we have. I want this as k over one plus j something. I can get that if I divide the entire numerator and denominator by one plus beta k. So if I divide AF of j omega, numerator and denominator by one plus beta k, I'm going to get k over one plus beta k over one plus j omega naught into one plus beta k. Now, we, now in a position, notice that beta and, um, wait a minute. yes, beta and k, k is a, the gain, beta is typically greater than one. So omega into one plus beta k, this little bit here is going to be greater than omega zero. Agreed? Yes, no? Does that make sense? Omega into one plus beta k is numerically bigger than omega zero. So if I were to plot this now, this in my, my corner frequency now has now moved from omega zero to omega into one plus beta k. In other words, if I go back to my original, plot here, the corner frequency has now moved from here to omega into one plus beta k, right? Look at the corner frequency here. So if I draw it now, and of course here now, this, is now 20 log k over one plus beta k. So this has gone down. This is less than, this little bit here is less than k, but the corner frequency has gone up to something bigger than omega zero. So if I were to plot this now, the low frequency point, which is less than omega, there's omega zero here into one plus beta k is a little bit less. This is something like this now, All right? This is 20 log k over one plus beta k. But this point now has now gone up, as you say, minus 20 dB per decade, right? But the frequency response has been increased. So the negative frequent, the negative feedback on the amplifier has increased our corner frequency, therefore has increased our bandwidth, which is this bit, but it has done it at the expense of a little decrease in gain. All right, so you are typical, I've mentioned this to, to you all on several occasions, in engineering, you don't get something for nothing. So we have applied feedback and what we've done is to increase the bandwidth by a factor of at least beta k. If beta k is much greater than one, then this is at least beta k times omega zero, which is, could be a substantial number. But typically or similarly, we've also reduced the gain by that amount. Gain is easy to compensate for because what I could do, I could always do on this, I could have, this is the feedback amplifier here. This is the feedback amplifier here. So I have increased bandwidth, decreased gain, but I could still, I could run it through another amplifier here. And if I make the gain of that amplifier beta K, at least, then when I come back out here, I could compensate for this loss here and I could get back almost my original k over what will be now one plus j omega over 
omega naught into one plus beta k. In other words, it's very easy to compensate for gain. That's what amplifiers do. They make to, they, they, they are made um, to give you gain. So, so if I lose gain and I know exactly how much gain I lose, which is easy to figure out from here, then I could very easily compensate for that. So I could get the best of both worlds. In other words, I could now by using feedback, I've increased my bandwidth and I could sort of come, I could compensate for any loss in gain by just simply increasing the, the um, what do you call it? By putting another stage with gain alone and, and, and compensate for it. Make sense? Yeah? Everybody's seeing that. And, and, and the way I wanted you to see it is by using what we what we did with the board plots that you could you could put the, the, the once you put the feedback um, um, in the amplifier, you can now look at the frequency response and simply draw the board plot. So you know you what you're looking for is to see where the corner frequency is going. It is starting at omega zero and it's ending up with the feedback at omega zero into one plus beta k, which is was going to be bigger than omega zero. Yeah? All right, so that is point number five here. That is where we get this one here now. All right, so we've done all of these. We did all of these a couple of weeks ago. We've now looked at this one. So in, in effect, putting feedback on an amplifier, we didn't look at the, the design of the amplifier specifically because that by itself, as I said, you could do um, entire courses on, on that kind of thing or big parts of it. But what does the feedback do to the, to, to the amplifier itself? And the last benefit of it is that it improves the frequency response of the amplifier, right? At, exp at the expense of, of, of a bit of gain, which is typical, which is similar to four as well. So both four and five, you could put the same, the same note here. If you like, you could put that note here as well, that it does it at the expense of a lowered um, closed loop gain. Right? So that's it. That's the top, that's the topic here. Comments, questions. It makes sense. So you see how it. Do you see how it works? Go back here a little bit. We went through all of this. Right. So you once you look at it, once you understand how it works now, then it's very easy to, to, to explain. So if I were to ask you a question like show um show that they, they by applying feedback to an amplifier that they, they um, by implying feedback of the amount beta to an amplifier, that the they, they, they bandwidth of the amplifier increases by amount, um, by an amount beta times whatever the gain of the amplifier is. And this is how you, you prove it, right? Okay. All right. So if that's all right, we are finished now. We are fully finished with the, with the topic content for ECNG 2012, all right? Um, I am preparing some, uh, well, we, we have some, some past paper questions, but because I've changed it up from, from what was done before, uh, many of the older past papers are have to sort of pick and choose the, 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 the questions that, that we can do and attempt. Um, I'm going to add some more. I'm creating a couple of revision problem sets for you, plus some problem sets to take up the last set of topics that we did. Right, so you're going to get out over the next couple of days. We don't have a class tomorrow, okay? So, so you're free to start your, your revision um, for, for this um, course. And next week, uh, we're going to have um, revisions and tutorials on both Monday and, um, and Tuesday as well, okay? And we'll probably have enough space to have one more the following week as well, okay? Right, so everybody all right with that? Any, any questions? Any concerns at this point? Okay, all right, well, as I say, if you, as, as you're doing it, if you coming up with issues or if you um, are, are doing something and it's not making any sense, send me an email. It's very easy to do, 
to do that and I'll respond. Okay, as soon as I get the email, I'll, I'll try to make some time and respond to you. If you are attempting a problem or you're trying something and you don't understand, do like some other people have done, which is to take a, a screenshot of it and send it to me, right? Ask for the clarification and I'll, 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 I'll um, try my best to do it. If I feel it's something that everybody should, should know, I'll put it on the, on the chat as well. Okay? All right. Okay, let me stop the, 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 the recording here.